I built a digital police scanner using a cheap USB SDR module and this awesome single board computer called the Zima Board 2. This setup uses an antenna to receive local radio transmissions, then it decodes the digital voice chatter and makes it available as a stream on my home network, which allows me to listen in using any device like my computer, phone, or tablet. Basically, we're taking a raw radio transmission that sounds like this, and then decoding it to this. Can you respond over the air? RP just stated four masked individuals rang his doorbell and started singing jingle bells before they walked away. He stated they were still in the neighborhood. Pretty cool, right? Not only can I listen to the stream, but I can potentially also consume it from other processing pipelines in the future, like maybe something that does voice to text. Consider subscribing if that sounds interesting. Let's check this thing out in detail, and I'll walk through everything that I did to set it up. The heart of this project is the Zima Board 2, which was sent to me for free by the folks over at Ice Whale. Many thanks to them for making this project possible. The Zima Board 2 is a single board computer that's rocking a 4-core Intel N150 CPU, which is an x86 chip, opening up a lot of options for how you can use this board. This one has 16 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage. The housing is made completely out of aluminum, which is super beefy. It has some unique features, such as exposing a PCIe port on the side for expansion cards, which is typically only ever seen on the inside of a computer. Similarly, there are two SATA ports on the back for plugging in hard drives, which is a huge win for performance if you're plugging drives in. They have a lot of marketing around using the Zima board as a network-attached storage device, also known as a NAS, but know that it's capable of much more than just that. The cardboard packaging cleverly has these holder slots that allow you to basically dock the Zima board and two drives for a NAS configuration. It's a nice touch to get you started, but I don't view this as a long-term mounting solution. It's still cool though. It comes with an optional cooling fan for heavier workloads, otherwise the Zima board is passively cooled by the heavy aluminum case, which is essentially a giant heatsink. The power brick ships with plugs for different regions, and it comes with a little wiring harness for connecting drives to the SATA ports on the back. They sent me this nice aluminum hard drive rack that has a bracket for mounting a PCIe card on the side. It gives off a kind of cool industrial vibe. I'm not ready to use it yet, but I'll definitely try it out in the future. Alright, let's move over to my desk and start hooking things up for this police scanner project. I don't know how well it comes through on the video, but I can't stress how nice this case is. It just looks and feels so premium. Super nice. Anyway, this little USB stick looking thing is a software defined radio device, also known as an SDR. I bought it on Amazon a while ago in a kit that came with this telescoping antenna that connects using an SMA connector. There's a newer version of this SDR module now that I'll link in the description below along with all the products used in this video if you want to check them out. Alright, nice, everything's hooked up. Kinda cool that the SDR module is the same color as the Zima board. It almost looks like it was made for it. Out of curiosity, I hooked up a cable to the mini display port on the Zima board so I could see what happens at boot. You can see Linux starting up, and then it ends at an info screen that includes the IP address of the Zima board. Let's throw that IP into the browser and load up the Zima OS interface. The Zima UI is really clean and simplistic. It doesn't have a ton of built-in configuration, but the platform itself is super open, and you can even check out the Zima OS source code on GitHub. You're also free to install a completely different OS if you want to, since this is just an x86 computer. You really have a lot of options. I just want to mess around with containers and simple home lab type stuff, so the Zima OS is perfect for what I want to do. Let's open the built-in app store and install Portainer so I can have a nice interface for installing and managing containers for my police scanner project. Alright, now that we have Portainer running, we can get ready to start building the police scanner. I looked up the local police frequencies in my area using radioreference.com. As an example, if we check out a town in Connecticut, the thing we need to look for is the mode that the police department is using. We're looking for ones that say P25, which is the digital mode that this project will be able to decode. On the left here, you can see the frequency that they're using. Something to watch out for is modes that say P25E, which means encrypted. We won't be able to listen to those because we won't have the necessary keys to decrypt the data. So if it has an E at the end, we can't listen to it. To make things easier, I'm going to use my little Baofeng ham radio to tune into the same frequency that I'm interested in. This radio is analog, so take a listen to what a digital transmission sounds like when you try to listen to it without decoding it. It just sounds like a bunch of noise with some structure to it. 
Having this little radio on hand will be useful while testing my decoding pipeline for the SDR module. It will allow me to detect if data is coming through that I might be failing to decode because I have a bug in my code or something. After a few hours, I hooked up a Docker container that has everything you need to run my decoding and streaming pipeline. I published the project to my GitHub, and I'll include a link to that in the video description. Let's walk through installing it on the Zima board and listening to a live decoded stream. After that, I'll talk about how the audio pipeline works. Jumping back to the Portainer instance that we installed earlier, I'll select my local environment and click on Stacks in the left pane. Then click on the Add Stack button in the upper right. For the build method, select Repository, and I'll give this stack a name of OP25 Radio Stream. You can call this whatever you want, though. Then jumping over to my GitHub page, clicking on the Code button lets you copy the repository URL for cloning. Now I can paste that into the repository field for the Portainer stack. To configure the frequency that we want to listen to, we need to set an environment variable called op25 underscore freq. Note that the readme on my GitHub page lists all the environment variables that are supported. Now for the actual frequency value. You need to specify the frequency in hertz. If you have the frequency in megahertz, you can just add e6 to the end, which means 10 to the 6th in scientific notation. Okay, cool. Now all I have to do is just click Deploy Stack. This will download all the necessary dependencies and build and install everything that's needed. Just note that this takes a few minutes to run. The OP25 radio stream image ends up being about 2.3 gigabytes. While I let this run, I'll do a side by side with the system monitor so you can see how the CPU is performing. The Zima board got a little warm, but nothing crazy. From a thermal perspective, installing and running this audio pipeline is no big deal at all. For heavier workloads though, this device does get pretty warm and would benefit from the optional cooling fan that came with it. Spoiler alert, I ended up installing that later just to have it available for the future. Alright cool, it finished deploying. I can click into the stack that I created, and if I scroll down you can see the IceCast and Media MTX containers, and then the OP25 radio stream container. If we click into the radio stream container, there's a logs button that we can click to view the logging and verify that everything's set up and running as expected. This will list the address and ports for the various streams. If you ever want to change the radio frequency, you can just go into the stack editor and expand the environment variables section. After making the change, click the update stack button to restart the stack and pick up the new environment variables. Now that this is running, I can open Safari on my Mac and listen to the stream. Go to 145. Can you make your way over to the House of Corrections and pick up a prisoner meal? You can do the same in Safari on your phone, or you can use an app like VLC as well. I've been thinking it would be cool to build a small dedicated device with a speaker that can play the stream too. I whipped up a quick prototype using a breadboard using an ESP32 S3 and a speaker connected through a Max 98357 chip. I'll be transporting the prisoner to the House of Corrections safety. Start mileage when you're ready. I scavenged this little speaker from one of my son's old toys to test with. With about 30 lines of Arduino code, I'm able to connect to my Wi-Fi, grab the stream, and play the audio through the speaker. Not a bad proof of concept. Okay, let's dive into how I built this audio pipeline. Many small towns will use a single frequency for their police department, and officers will share that frequency by taking turns talking. Originally, they all used analog equipment, which could be listened to with cheap scanners or even some ham radios. Lots of towns have either already moved over to digital or are in the process of doing so. Larger towns use even more complex digital radio systems that use what's called trunking technology, where multiple frequencies are used. The project we're working on here is designed for the more simple single frequency scenario. After some experimentation, here's what I came up with. So we have the SDR module that receives the digital signal over the air. Then when data is received, we use an open source project called OP25 to decode it into audio that can be listened to. I want to take this audio and expose it on my home network so I can listen to it on other devices. But this has proved to be a little tricky because of the intermittent nature of people transmitting on the frequency. You can go long stretches of time where no one's talking at all. I ended up building a little shim module in Python that inserts silence data into the gaps when no one's talking. This creates an always-on stream of data. From there, I used a tool called FFmpeg to normalize the audio stream so it can be routed through two streaming servers that I created, MediaMTX and IceCast. 
Media MTX uses a more modern streaming protocol, while IceCast is a more traditional streaming radio style solution. You technically don't need both, but it gives you more options for consuming the audio from different clients. All right, that's it. You can check out the code on my GitHub that's linked in the description. This was a super fun project. The Zima Board 2 runs my little audio pipeline without breaking a sweat. It's an awesome little device, and I can't wait to build more stuff with it. A big thanks to the Ice Whale team for sending it over. If you enjoyed following along, please consider hitting that like button and maybe subscribing. Alright, I'll catch you in the next one.